Welcome to the Fit and Free with AIM podcast. I'm your host, Amy Louise. By listening to this podcast, you'll gain clarity and apply now principles in relation to training, nutrition, and mindset, all designed to help you build a strong and lean physique and show up as your best self. If you're a woman who struggles with excessive behaviors when it comes to training and food and think of yourself as a perfectionist, I hear you, I see you, I was you. And I know that you're in exactly the right place to change that narrative and build a body you love inside and out. Let's go. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Fit and Free with AIM podcast. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch today, so we're going to get right into the episode. The episode is called the Type A to Getting Through Performance Setbacks. And there are a few reasons why I wanted to do this episode today. And most of them are to do with conversations I've had with clients this week or a few other people in the DMs about managing these periods. Now, when I'm talking about performance setbacks, there are lots of reasons why we might be encountering a performance setback. So I was just speaking to one person about a pregnancy, which is amazing that they were like trying for, but didn't quite expect it to happen so soon. And I was just speaking to that woman about, and I think we can be frank and just be frank and honest about our feelings here without being judged by other people. But she was saying like, of course, it's amazing. And she's very grateful. And it was a period of time where she was really in her groove with her training and was actually in a deficit phase at the start of a deficit deficit phase, ready to lose some body fat after an extended period of maintenance. So she was very, very excited to be in that phase. And a few things will have to change, not so much in terms of the training structure, but definitely in terms of training performance when someone is in a the pregnancy phase of their life, <laughs> We need to adjust training expectations and look at maintenance of progress instead of thinking about, you know, smashing out PRs every week. It's it's just not going to be what's going to happen, especially as they get closer and closer to their due date. But otherwise, this can be a this can be related to personal stresses can impact your training performance. But even just becoming an intermediate lifter or even like intermediate to advanced. The progressions will get smaller and smaller. If you've listened to any of my episode on, episodes on this podcast, you'll know I do talk about this, that early on in our training journey, maybe the first 12 months of really consistent training, so you can't count your first 12 months if you are on and off all of the time, that doesn't count, but your first 12 months of pretty much every week of the year, give or take a few, you have trained, you will start to notice that the progressions will will be smaller and they they will probably not happen every week. Even as a newbie lifter, after a little while, you'll probably see progression slow down. Uh, sometimes, you know, this is a result of like having to stay back at work and missing sessions or emergency periods with family, injury, illness. There are lots of things that go into performance setbacks, but I just wanted to also lay out that even if everything is going really well, the more advanced you get, the progressions will start to look a little bit different. You won't be, it's highly unlikely you'll be taking 10, 20, 30 kilo wins across the course of a training month. They will slow down and you might not know that that's what's to be expected. And you might look back at like your first six months of training and go, well, why was I able to make so much progression then? And I can't now, and you'll get really upset with yourself. And I see this with some of my clients. So This is why I wanted to talk about it. So I think there are a few things that are really important to point out. And the first one is that these periods of setbacks or slower progress are absolutely inevitable and we should expect them. They shouldn't be a shock when they happen. Now, for the women that I coach and speak to, it is a shock to them because they have unreasonable expectations of perfection. And I know some people still wear this as a badge of honor. It's really not. Whenever I see it, unfortunately, it's like just a massive red flag that that person has 
some personal work to do some inner growth and I just want to say that I actually don't have this anymore in relation to fitness, my physique, my performance, which is amazing. But I do have it in relation to my business. I'll be really candid and say that I do struggle quite a bit with, I don't even know if it's perfectionism, to be honest with you. I'm the type of person who is like, I'm not perfect enough to have perfectionism, which I think is is all we need to know to say that I probably do struggle with it. But Whilst in, in my fitness clients, I do see it as a red flag and that's the truth. I don't want that to feel like a, a judgment on you because I do this. I just do it in a different area. And maybe you noticed it in other areas of your life as well that you're struggling with it. So this is really about perform, uh, this is really about expectation management. So what we need to do to help you through this is to, well, first of all, you've got to be willing to let go of having such a rigid standard. And for some people, it just feels so familiar. It feels like a comfort zone. It feels like a safety blanket. For them, letting go will, could feel like their life is going to spiral into chaos. Like, I get it. And that's fine. If you're not ready to change and you're happy being frustrated with yourself all of the time and beating yourself up and not overly enjoying the process and impacting your relationships like you do you if you would like to continue down that route that's your choice but if we want to change things it's first going to have to come with an acceptance that we need to change the belief behind it so what we're trying to do is just broaden your beliefs on what does performance success actually mean so right now it's probably going to look a, in a very fixed way. There's only one thing that is going to tell you that you're being successful with your training performance. And from what I've seen with my clients, it's either going to be like specific lifts and you're expecting a consistent rate of progression with those lifts or being able to hit specific numbers uh, as you go along with the weeks. Or it could be something like your overall training intensity and not not making room for changes in your performance through fatigue and fatigue can be impacted by sleep, by stress, by food intake, by our menstrual cycle, by a lot of things, right? So we just need to broaden your beliefs and what does performance success mean to you? So we need to help you engage in something that's called psychological flexibility. This is, and I'm just going to read this sh like straight out of, uh, straight off the interwebs. So psychological flexibility is the ability to stay in contact with the present moment, regardless of your unpleasant thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations while choosing one's behaviors based on the situation and personal values. So it's really being able to take a step back and instead of getting lost in this downward spiral of pain, of hate, of self-flagellation, of guilt, of shame, of anger and frustration, it's totally fine to feel these things, but then what we're trying to say is really coming back down to earth, bring yourself back down to earth you won't be able to do that if you believe that performance success means X and it only means X. You'll lose yourself in it. Now, one of the reasons why I also very much care about this is because from my perspective, I'm a coach. My job is to help women get amazing results, right? So my job is to help people get the best performance results that they can possibly get. And I know the way to do it is to reduce stress wherever possible. And if you're spending an hour, two hours a day beating yourself up over your training performance, it's that is going to produce a significant amount of stress. And when we are going through those familiar thought patterns in your head of beating yourself up, it's going to reduce your enjoyment of training, which is going to actually, believe it or not, really lead you to a self-fulfilling prophecy of reducing your energy levels for the training session. But you might even see fractured relationships with family, partners, and friends because you're constantly going to be beating yourself up in your head, which could make you irritable uh, and less engaged with them. It might even 
relate to you know how much time you're spending in the gym like striving for these results that you're so pissed off that you feel like you should be getting um and of course all of this can lead to really poor health com health outcomes so increases in stress we know uh, impact you know the risk of cardiovascular disease it can even uh, reduce your ability to lose body fat it might also lead to maladaptive emotional regulation practices whether that is drinking or food or pursuing unhealthy relationships or overworking it, it just really can cause a cascade of maladaptive behaviors so I want to really reiterate that, that I'm not trying to put you in cotton wool. I'm not trying to be warm and fuzzy. My goal is to help you get the best performance results as possible. And that's what I'm doing. So, because I think a few of you are going to hear this and going to go, oh, you're just being too nice or you're being too compassionate. I don't need that. I need someone to tell me that I'm you know, a little bitch. And that's how I move forward with my progress. And it's like, to an extent, I think it's really helpful to push your boundaries on your comfort. So discomfort during training, like doing more reps or adding more weight. If your form is great and you've got the capacity, like chasing discomfort through those things. Yes. But not through you berating yourself in your head because of the fact that it's going to increase your strength. The primary one is it's going to increase your stress levels, which is going to have a negative impact on your training. So as much as you think it might be helping propel you forward, if you are able to let that go and approach your training performance and progressions with a sense of rationality, you would actually get better progress. But like I said at the start, you have to be willing to let go of your standard of perfection to open yourself up to the possibility of even more growth and success when we're playing the game of just being rational humans. And I'm laughing a little bit in my head because I, I had a conversation with one of my clients last week, actually two of them last week through some two, two compound lifts. And they were both like, I don't know why I'm not hitting XYZ numbers. And I put both of those numbers into perspective for these clients just in terms of what they're actually seeking to uh, achieve is not reasonable and they're going to have to put in more time and effort to get there. I don't want to come at this conversation from a point of entitlement, but I will say for some people, they do feel like they're entitled to results they haven't yet earned. And that might be an issue for some people. So again, this can come back to really looking at the start of your journey, or it can be looking at other people's results and thinking that, well, because this person's doing this, or because I could do this in my first 12 months, or like as in the rate of progression, I could, you know, progress faster in my first 12 months, I should be entitled to, to do the same. And with our performance progress in the gym, there are going to be a lot of factors outside of the gym that are going to impact or, uh, yeah, impact your training performance. But at the same time, we have to appreciate that if we don't have a number in the bag yet, you haven't earned it. And it can be due to genetics. It can be due to lever lengths. It can be due to your schedule, your food intake, your skill set. Like, And I think people are looking at this like, oh, it needs to be fair or just because I'm showing up, I'm entitled to the result. And none of these things are true when it comes to training. If you don't have the result, you haven't earned it. That's not to be mean or rude or put you down. It's just the way things are. You also cannot compare your rates of progress to anyone else. They they do not have your body. They do not have your... And by that, I'm specifically talking about like your height, which impacts fatigue and your lever lengths and the way your, uh, your skeleton is structured, which impacts like joint angles and all of those things. Uh, it, your, I think I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure if I said this, your genetics as well and how you handle performance, um, like even things like fast twitch and slow twitch fiber distribution. And then there's going to be just your overall ability with your motor skills. So 
look whether this is fair or not it's I, I don't think it's got anything to do with it but i often find that people who played sports or like into athletics or whatever as very small children seem to be able to grasp form faster than people who only came into training you know sort of post teenage years just is what it is you know and that's probably a decision your parents might have made for you when you're little there's nothing you can do about that uh, and like i said before genetics is going to play a big role and in some of my talks where i've looked at hormonal implications as well funnily enough some women who have pcos often end up doing very well in things like powerlifting strength sports due to their elevations in testosterone now estrogen is fantastic for building muscle mass so there's that but we also have um the uh, we also have testosterone to account with for those women with pcos and we see that can actually really be beneficial for their athletic performance and i can't remember the stat now but it's like if you look at a lot of the a lot of the athletes who do or elite athletes in the powerlifting space uh, i believe there is like a, a high degree of association with either just higher testosterone levels or actually pcos so like it's really interesting and you probably wouldn't have even thought of that so just say you and your friend are both doing really similar training and one of you is able to progress at a faster rate like it just is what it is and you're going to have to be an adult and learn to accept that and like I said, I want to come at this from just as a rational perspective of, as possible. I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm also not trying to be like overly fluffy. I really want to come right through the middle at this conversation. So what are we going to do? We're going to need to identify your underlying beliefs that are causing you to feel extreme frustration. It feel like shit and berate yourself, right? Now, at the moment, they're probably all going to feel true to you. Like you wouldn't be... You wouldn't be engaging in the shitty feelings if they were based on beliefs that you didn't believe in. Like it's, 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 they're all going to feel true and how some of them might be like, you might be injured uh, and that could be very frustrating or you might have <laughs> just found out you're pregnant and thinking about having to pull things back a little bit in future, which might upset you. Uh, you might not be as strong as your friends. Okay. So some of these will be true, but then we're also going to have the ones that are not true in relation to success means X. You're going, it's highly likely you've got a very rigid outlook on what does success mean. And with a lot of my clients, I spend a lot of time talking them through like right now in this season, and it's going to pass because all, season pa all seasons pass. Right now, this is the metrics we need to guide your success by. And depending on where some people are at, it could be uh, just an amount of sessions, like getting into the gym once or twice a week. I have someone who's going through an extremely traumatic period mentally right now. And for us, we've just chosen for her, even just to get into the gym like once a week is her metric of success. Other clients are killing it. They're in the gym at four to five days a week, but they're frustrated because you know they're lifting heavier than ever and they might only see a progression in like a rep here or there or a 2.5 kilo progression you know uh, maybe every second session instead of every single session which if you are a really experienced intermediate to advanced lifter you know that's just like part and parcel but these women are just hitting that point now where they've really reached the top of their capacity and they're experiencing for the first time what it feels like to fight for new numbers and they don't like it because they're not moving as fast as they had been previously and yeah it hurts like I get it I get it so what I would do if I were you is write down all of the beliefs on paper that are leading you to feel upset or whatever that sort of negative feeling is uh, you know, pain, frustration, guilt, shame, um, you know, what's the point of this or why is everyone else progressing faster than me or whatever. Write down what you believe to be true and it's all going to feel true. And then also specifically write down what does progress mean to you? And 
with doing that, you may not be able to do this on your own. So you may either need the help of your coach or an ex or an experienced lifting friend. Someone who doesn't lift won't be able to help you with this exercise. I just want to chuck it out there. So you're going to have to do this with either a coach or someone who you trust who is further along the lines than you. But you need to then show them what you've got written down and what your idea of success is. And then you need to look at what season of your life are you in and what your capacity is. And then we need to redefine your definition of success, okay? So from here, just to help you start to broaden your perspective, it'll be things like, what are the building blocks of progression? You know, so it's going to be related to your nutrition intake is going to be part of it. Your sleep and stress management is going to be part of it. Your health is going to be part of it. Your mental health is going to be part of it. Your um, your actual training sessions, what you do pre-sessions and post-sessions, your warming, your warm-up or rehab, prehab if you need it. They're just some of the things. I think I listed most of them, but I might have forgotten a few because I didn't have a, a list in front of me. But have a think about the bigger picture of all of the things that make up possible progressions. And you can start to pick out a few things that you're going to look at your efforts and your ability to engage in those processes to start being able to say like, okay, I'm deadlifting 110 kilos for five reps. You know, just three months ago, I was doing like 100 for one. <laughs> but what else can I look to 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 appreciate the progress that I'm making, even if like getting an extra 2.5 kilos or adding an extra rep feels like it's really hard to come by right now. We know that with time, we will make the progress, but am I doing all of the things I need to be doing to support my progress outside? And that's all I can ask of myself. All I can ask of myself is that I'm truly, when I look at it, I'm doing everything that I can if we are doing everything that we, we we can, the progress will come. Look, there is going to be a genetic limit where you really truly hit a bit of an upper wall and drugs is probably the only way to go up. <laughs> uh, and even then, and that's when we look at doing things like, you know, potentially just having to muck around with other forms of progression, whether that be potentially like adding a set or slowing things down or changing rep ranges just to see if we can squeeze out any last bits of progression but there there is genetic ceilings because if there wasn't you know I would be able to turn into like the top male bodybuilder it's never like that's that's actually physically impossible it's never going to happen so you have to also understand like you are human with a ceiling. Most people will never get anywhere near their ceilings. Like, I just want to chuck it out there. You would have to work your ass off for probably decades to get to your ceiling or maybe a decade to get to your ceiling. Maybe a bit more than that. I'm not sure. It, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of consistency. And like I said, a lot of effort. Most people will never get there. But there is a ceiling. It's like... I don't think that I could probably ever beat the male 100 meter sprinters, no matter how much I try, right? Like we have to be real with like there are genetic limits we have. Okay, then we need to ask like what progression is reasonable to expect? And this is where you'll need someone with experience to be able to help manage your expectations because often I'm coming up with or I'm coming up against clients who they're not basing their ideas of expectations in terms of progressions. And I'm talking mostly for bigger compound movements, but one I get a lot is actually like a cable side raise. Um, it's really hard to make progressions. The muscle is really small. We can't produce much force and the increases in load as a percentage are really significant uh, for that muscle, for the muscle group, right? So I have so many people actually with that, the cable side raise, like, why can't I get past the second pin or whatever? And it's like, look, it's really hard because the um, that percentage of intensity is really significant jumps on that muscle. It's a very small muscle. It doesn't produce much force. So 
uh, the progress the progression there is going to be far smaller than something you know like a leg press where we've got heaps of external stability we can just chuck you in that's something that i think is going to be a little bit easier for us to see you know a more significant rate of progression on right um, and then I also want to ask you, like, how can you improve your frustration tolerance? And the word frustration tolerance or that phrase, I believe, comes from um, some cognitive behavioral therapies. I really love cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, I've had it, received it myself with the help of a psychologist, and I've, I read a lot about it for the way my brain works. It very much helps me with my catastrophizing, with my perfectionism, with my procrastination, um, and with my striving, it very it does help me. Like I said at the start of this, it's something I definitely struggle with. Like every single day, I'm struggling with. I wouldn't say well, maybe my mental health. That might sound dramatic, and maybe it is dramatic, but it is something I struggle with. So like I'm here, I'm with you in the trenches. <laughs> But just asking yourself, like, what can you sit with? What levels of discomfort can you sit with? And can you sit with falling short of your expectations? Can you manage your expectations and bring yourself back down to earth, even if that feels incredibly uncomfortable because maybe you're not used to it? Maybe you feel like if you stop being a total bitch to yourself, you'll get nowhere. That's not true. I explained why the, a lot of it has to do with the stress response, but also sustainability and energy and enthusiasm for the process. Um, it's okay that if we, I think that people can achieve amazing things when they are coming at, at it from like fear or to some extent a self-loathing. Like I think a lot of successful people do talk about significant trauma that actually has propelled them forward but a lot of them unfortunately talk about there is a lack of enjoyment in the process for them and that they're on journeys to try to unravel that and move forward because when we are coming at something with huge amounts of joy and enthusiasm, even if they're hard and uncomfortable, like I'm not saying that it won't be, any fitness journey where you're really pushing your boundaries, it's going to come with discomfort and that's normal. So I don't want you to think I'm talking about eliminating discomfort. I think we need to be, we, we're going to have to feel uncomfortable to grow and to push ourselves, but there's a big difference between doing that and having a laugh about it because it hurts uh, and just slaughtering ourselves in our head every day. We're going to make different decisions. We're going to react to different things. Um, we're going to choose different strategies and they're not going, the, the ones that are based through self-loathing and not going to be the ones that take us over the finish line and help us achieve our fullest potential. So I hope this episode was really helpful. I'm going to wrap it up there. If I could just summarize in terms of helping you approach setbacks, number one, understand that they are inevitable and they're going to keep coming. So this one shall pass. The one you're in now will pass. You will be fine for a bit. And then who knows how long it could be months, years, weeks, whatever you will, you will definitely hit another one honestly, unless you die first, you're going to hit another one. So expect them, plan for them, and be willing to adjust your expectations of what success means to you in this period. Continue to strive and push and try as hard as you can. Be wary of your internal self-talk and catch it when it starts to spend, send you down a doom spiral. Practice writing out what those thoughts are and what what level of performance success those thoughts are based on how can you speak to someone who has more experience than you to help you decide what a more appropriate level of performance success would be for this specific period again injury illness pregnancy uh, work stress relationship stress ge geographical changes whatever Figure out what you need to look at for success. Keep your idea of success broad in terms of it may not even just be what's in the gym. It could be making sure you're hitting your food targets as well. So you can see that you're doing what you need to do in those areas. It could be making sure you're sticking to your sleep schedule. That is going to have a huge impact on your performance. And that can be part of your success, okay? 
So it's really helping you get out of the all or nothing. It has to be 110 kilo deadlift for eight reps this week or else I'm a fucking shit human. Well, how about we can try some other things? What about, um, you know, a one, uh, 107.5, getting my sleep, getting all of my food, making sure I've done my warm ups, right? And I know that after a few weeks, I will get that 110, but I need to focus all my efforts on doing the best that I can and understanding that that is all that I can do. All that I am capable of is giving my best. <laughs> and, you know, there are going to be times where we have to adjust what that looks like depending on what we're going through at any given time. So with that being said, I am all done here now. Uh, as per usual, if you have any questions or comments about the episode, definitely let me know. And I have just made a really cool announcement about a collaboration between the Jack Girl University and the Glam Body Program. And there are coaching spots open with this specific program that we are running or that I'm running throughout the end of 2023 to really cap off your year on a massive high. It's a combination of coaching and education specifically related to building muscle mass and getting lean. So if you're curious about that and want to jump in, there are still going to be spots open. So you just need to send me a DM. The links are in the show notes below so that you can get in contact me about that with me about that. And I will speak to you guys next week.